What is going on, Bully fam? It's your boy, the educator, the scientist, Mr. Double Muscle Line Bulls, bringing you guys another episode of Breeders Hacks. So this one, um, it's an exciting one because our super stud, Anger Management, um, he's actually going to be open for uh, early lock-in tomorrow. So I thought um, this would be the perfect time to kind of, you know, do a little episode on contract studs, you know, things like that when it comes to breeding, especially in this bully game. So when you have a stud and you're doing lock-ins, you know, there's, there's locking in a stud for a specific price because usually the price is going to go up or because the stud owner only wants to stud out to maybe like, you know, it could be five, could be 10, could be 20 females. And, you know, when you have a lot of lock-ins, it can get very hectic and very crazy if you're not set up and organized to be able to cater to all those clients, you know, with your stud. You know, he can become very popular and you become very busy. So some breeders understand how busy you can truly get and only want to limit it to a certain amount of lock-ins. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, everybody yet again conducts business differently. So usually the process that takes place is, you know, someone puts, you know, their dog either up for stud or up for early lock-in or whatever the case it may be. And they'll go ahead and, um, you know, list that dog up and people will go ahead now and you'll contact that stud owner, you know, uh, inquire about what's the cost. You would go ahead, send your deposit, and you're locked in for whatever the amount of time is and things like that. Like when it comes to breeding to studs, especially in this bully game, you know, there's so many different studs to choose from. You know, everyone conducts business differently. And that's all, that's that's like one of the key things you want to keep in mind when you are, um, you know, choosing a stud to breed to. You know, it's more than the stud just looking nice and whatnot. You know, they come it also comes along with their owner and you know how they conduct business and the things that they expect from you when it comes time to completing the breeding so you have a successful breeding you know most most breeders really ideally should have a stud contract you know um a lot of breeders don't and i mean uh you can get away with it and be very successful you know it's just one of those things that all it takes is one situation to kind of go sour and you really don't want people you know coming after your name coming after your program whatever the case may be because it may have never even have been your fault you know as being a stud owner so i mean um yeah having a stud contract is key and essential and kind of just highlighting you know the things that are expected from you from the stud owner as well as say uh you if you are the um you know the client you know that has the female that's doing the breeding so that's something we do here at double muscle line bulls we have um a contract lined out you know kind of emphasizing you know the things that um is expected from us things that are expected from you if you're breeding to one of our studs we don't you know, thank God we really haven't ever had to enforce it like that. We do good business and we always try to work things out. That's what you want to try to do when you're a stud owner, you know, um, and just give good, good customer service overall. You know, that's what that's what we aim for. If you go to our website, breedershacks.com, um, and there's going to be an article, you know, stud contract, click on that and it'll have this episode here and under it, you guys could go ahead and actually download our stud contract for free. If you guys wanna use it as your own template, if you wanna compare it to other stud contracts that you guys may be are coming across, go ahead and definitely just um, go to the information center on breedershacks.com, our website. Um, go to information center and click on the topic that says stud contract and you'll have the PDF there. You guys can download it, do whatever you guys want with it. Um, and another thing just to be mindful of is yet again, like I said, if if a dog doesn't come with a stud contract, I'll just ask what are the terms and conditions when locking in your stud? You know, because it, it can get very tricky and very finicky. Some, some stud owners only want you to do surgicals. So that means you'll have to be ready and find a vet that will do a surgical insemination for your female. And you do not want to find that out after you locked in a dog, say for a thousand dollars, and the stud fee is like $5,000. I've had that happen. You know, um, the other thing too, is some stud owners only let you use the stud credit within the first like year or two. So it expires, you know, hours don't expire. Another thing to be mindful of is like, 
you know, does the stud owner make you commit to a certain female? What happens if your female dies? These are all questions you kind of need to have in mind. You know what I'm saying? Because do you lose your stud credit? A lot of stud owners may only give you one breeding, maybe two breedings. Maybe they give you a repeat. You know, um, I've had stud owners that make sure that if the breeding didn't take, that I had to go to the vet and confirm and file and give them documentation. So, you know, yet again, um, those are all things to be mindful of. And I mean, I'm definitely, you know, I'm definitely gonna be doing an episode, you know, talking about, um, you know, what, what I look for when I'm choosing a stud, you know, things like that, you know, pedigree wise, all that, you know, break down everything. But I'm just saying like, there's other stud owners out there and they conduct business. Everybody does it completely differently. Just be mindful of that, guys. Um, you know, I just don't want to see you guys get caught into situations, locking in dogs and it just not working out because there was miscommunication. So definitely, I mean, you're giving these guys your money. You know, uh, same thing yet again. Uh, anyone who locks in their dog with us, you know, we are completely transparent. That's what you guys want. So then you have successful breedings and there's no misunderstandings. That kind of transitions into, like, like I said, why I created this video for today was because tomorrow uh, anger management opens up for early lock-in. So he actually currently right now, he is four months. And I mean, this dog looks phenomenal. I mean, go on the Instagram page and check him out. But besides the point, because we're opening him up for early lock-in, you know, that basically means that we're gonna go ahead and allow people to lock him in early at a lower discounted price. Um, until we officially open him or until we hit a certain amount of lock-ins and then we'll go ahead and up his stud fee. So that's usually like, that's usually the case. Like people will do lock-ins so that then um, you're locking in that stud's price before it goes up or before he's closed or whatever the case it may be, before they close the stud and you can't breed to him anymore. You know, I've seen studs start out as low as you know, a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, and work their way up over time to ten thousand dollars for breeding. You know, some people may think it's 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 crazy. I mean, that's just kind of the bully game. So, uh, like I said, anger management. We're opening them up for early lock-in. So, more towards the topic now. Some people, most people in the bully game, I've come across, they do their lock-ins. It's like five hundred. A thousand, you know, you lock in, and that's, you know, that locks you in for the stud, and then the rest of the balance is paid when you breed to the stud. That's normally how it's how it's ran. Um, if somebody does anything different, like I said, everybody conducts business differently, but that's usually the gold standard. You know, you pay a certain amount to lock in early, usually usually around like 500 bucks, and then you pay the rest of the balance when you're ready to do the breeding. So at Double Muscle Line Bulls, we run things a little bit differently. Um, yet again, like I said, I've seen it get crazy where some people, you know, you pay, you can pay as much as like, you know, a, a couple of thousand to lock in the dog and the balance is paid, you know, when the breeding goes down or just paying the whole stud fee up front in full, you know? And I mean, what we've done and what we've found that we prefer that works out really for everybody and i mean not a lot of breeders do this but this is just what we do is you know we take a very small amount for the lock-in because all you're doing is giving us a deposit to lock in that stud fee so for us you know we really don't need the money like that you know and we're not giving you anything other than that lock-in you're not you're not getting anything so why pay so much up front you know so what we do is we take a smaller fee up front, you know, because for us, it's just one of those things that it's like, we don't need really the money like that. And it's like, why take so much of your money up front? And we're not providing you anything yet. You know what I'm saying? Like we're providing you a service once your female's ready to be bred. And once you have actually paid the balance in full. So if you're not ready to do your breeding for like a year, why do I need to sit on your money for you know, whether it's 500, 1,000, 2,000, $3,000, you know? So that's where we've kind of said, you know what? Let's just take a very small portion just to lock in, just as a deposit. And then when you're ready to do your breeding, that's when we go ahead and you pay the full balance, you know? So 
like I said, everybody runs things differently, but in all actuality, you know, I'm not giving you any kind of service until you do the breeding. So there's not really a need for me to take a large chunk of money from you up front. You know, so everybody conducts business differently. You know, other kennels, you know, maybe they, they, you know, whatever they need the money for up front, that's everybody has a different business model. But like I said, that's just kind of what we do. So that's why I've been having a lot of people contact us about anger and was so shocked as to what his stud fee was. And um, his stud fee right now, his intro stud fee is, um, 2500 like I said with with a small deposit up front so um, like I said people who were shocked you know uh, it's not you know it's it's not a scam or anything like that you're hearing it from me straight from my mouth it's just we wanted to conduct we we conduct business a little bit differently you know we don't want you know people's money completely up front and we haven't provided any kind of service you know um, that's just how we conduct business guys so definitely, you know, keep a lookout, you know, for how these guys do business. Look at the stud contracts. Like I said, you guys can go ahead and jump on breedershacks.com, get a copy of ours. I hope this episode was helpful. You know, it was kind of quick and straight to the point, but I just want you guys, you know, to acknowledge that not everybody conducts business the same, especially in this dog game, you know? And, um, you know, some take, their name very serious when it comes to their reputation when conducting business in this dog game and others don't really care and they're just in it to make a quick buck so they don't care what happens when it comes to your breeding so just be mindful of that guys and um you know definitely like you know like i said do your homework see what breeders you really want to tap in with you know yeah, stay tuned guys you know uh for the announcement tomorrow anger management is going to be open for early lock-in so make sure you guys tap in and uh yo definitely hit us up contact us if you want to lock uh, or want to early lock in uh, let us know who needs some anger management all right guys i'll see you guys in the next episode of breeders hacks